On this channel, we've looked at bits and bit manipulation many times over many videos. And what that means is even though we've went over this subject in depth before, it's kind of scattershot. It's kind of all over the place. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a crash course of all the fundamentals behind bits and bit manipulation. This video is going to focus on breadth instead of depth, and it's going to be very fast paced, which is something I'm not very used to doing. So let me know how it turns out. Anyway, you're watching another random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another random Wednesday episode. Today, we're going to focus on two big concepts. The first being numerical representation using bits and the second being operations that can be done on bits and bit strings. So with that said, let us jump into the first part. First, what is a bit? A bit is the smallest unit of storage. It can only take on two values and that is zero or one. In and of itself, a bit can be used for representing Boolean values, that is true or false. However, bits can become even more useful to represent numbers if we were to string them together. For example, this is a 4-bit number. By using 4 bits and by using different combinations of bits, we can represent different numbers. To figure out its actual value, every digit is actually represented by an increasing power of 2. These values are actually multiplied by the value of the bit and summed together. Using this technique, we can have very large numbers, you know, with 8 bits, 16 bits, or even more. To calculate the number of combinations you can generate from a bit string of length n, you simply take 2 to the power of n. These are some of the common lengths of bit strings, and as you can see, the number of combinations actually double every time you add an additional bit. Now, these techniques are quite limited, in the sense that you can only represent positive integers. To represent a negative number, well, there are several different techniques that let you do this, but all of the more popular techniques use the most significant bit, that is the bit all the way at the left, as a flag for the negative sign. If it is 1, the number is negative. If it is 0, the number is positive. The simplest way to do this is called sign and magnitude, and for this method, well, all you do is to use that left bit as a flag. The rest of the bits just represent a number, and we simply stick a negative sign to the number if that flag has been set to 1. Other techniques exist, for example, one's complement, which says that the negative version of a number is just the inversion of the positive version. Of course, both these techniques we've just seen have a little flaw, and that is the fact that there are two versions of 0 positive 0 and negative 0. Two's complement is the technique that works around this problem. All negative numbers are offset by 1, so that we end up with one more negative number at the end, and just one version of 0. To represent decimal values, there are two different techniques, the simpler of which is called a fixed point representation, where instead of giving every digit a positive power of 2, some of them also get negative powers, and in other words, they stand for half and a quarter and an eighth and so on. This number works just like an integer, except now, certain bits actually represent values that are smaller than 1. At the end of the day, we still sum everything together to get the actual value. Of course, this method is flawed because the precision of both the integer part and the decimal part are fixed. If you have a number that, you know, doesn't quite follow this layout, for example, a number with a complex decimal part, but a very simple integer part, you actually cannot represent the decimal portion properly, while at the same time, you are wasting bits for the simple integer part. Which is why a better solution to decimal numbers is floating point numbers. A floating point number represents your decimal value as a multiplication. Basically, you have to store two components, a mantissa and an exponent. This technique is very similar to what you might know as scientific notation from school. What's really cool about this method is that the location for the decimal point is variable and depends on the exponent. Representing numbers this way allows you to represent a wider range of numbers in comparison to a fixed point number. 
because it means that at no point of time will a large proportion of the bits in a number go to waste. So those were numerical representation techniques, and let's now move on to operations. Now, when working with numbers, you know, normal numbers in math, we have operations like plus, minus, times, and divide. When working with binary, we sort of have the analog of that as well. These functions are shown on screen. They may look quite complex, but as we go through them, you realize that they are actually pretty simple. So let's look at all these operations from the top down. We're going to be explaining them in the context of true or false. Of course, true corresponds to 1, false corresponds to 0. Now, when you say something is not true, that of course means it's false. If it's not false, then it's true. So not simply inverts the value of the input. As an interesting aside, not is the only operator that takes in only one input, just like the negative sign in normal math. That only takes in one input, and it only changes that one thing. All right, let's move on to and and all. Now, if I say A is true and B is true, then for this entire statement to be true, obviously both A and B needs to be true. That's basically how and works. It can only give you a result of true if both its inputs are true. On the other hand, or does things slightly differently. If I say A is true or B is true, then this entire statement is true as long as just one of the inputs are true. We move on once again to NAND and NOT. Now, these are basically just NOT AND and NOT ALL. So what this means is, if you have to do a NAND operation, then all you have to do is to just do an AND operation and then invert the result. Same deal for NOT, just do an OR operation and invert the result. Then we have X ALL. Now, XOR stands for exclusive OR, and it works just like the OR operation, but it is exclusive in nature. So what that means is, if both the inputs are true, your output is false. So you can think of this as sort of a it needs to be different kind of check. If the two inputs are different, the output is 1. If the two inputs are the same, the output is 0. XNOR is just an inversion of XOR. So yeah, same idea perform an XOR operation, and then do a NOT on a result. Using these operations will allow you to combine the results of all these different decisions into one final result that takes everything into account. Now, these operations don't just work on single Boolean values. If you give it a bit string, then the same operation is basically done iteratively on every single bit. If your operation takes in two inputs, and the two inputs are of different lengths, then you align them towards the right, just like you would when you're doing, say, addition. You align everything to the right, and everything in the corresponding columns will be operated on against each other. Now, when we have bit strings, we have access to another operation called bit shifting. Basically, this just means taking the contents of the string and shifting them either in one direction or the other. Using these operations strategically in a programming language allows us to use a number as a bit string. This is called bit masking, and there are actually four operations you can perform. All these operations involve creating a mask, which will of course only apply whatever change it is you want to apply to the particular bits you want to change. Everything else will remain untouched. So the first operation is set. Let's say I have a bit string that looks like this, I want to set this bit to 1. All I have to do is to generate a mask that is 1 at the point I want to change and perform an OR operation with the original string. This of course forces the bit that is already there to become 1, while all the other bits will remain unchanged. I can also clear a particular bit. To do this, I'll generate a mask that is 1 everywhere except at the bit I want to change. Then, perform an AND operation between the mask and the original number. You'll keep the value of everything except the bit you want to change, which gets forced to 0. You can also toggle bits by creating a mask with 1 at all the bits you want to toggle, and performing an XOR operation between the original number and the mask. Finally, you can query a particular value by creating a mask that is 1 at the bits you want to query. 
then perform an AND operation between the two and test to see if the result is greater than zero. If you do indeed get zero, what that means is the bit wasn't one and you've gotten a result that is just a whole string of zeros. Otherwise, well, you have a one and that's why there is some numerical value. And there you go, we've just dropped through quite a few concepts that has to do with bits and how we manipulate them. That's basically it for this episode, I have dumped a lot of information on you right now, so yeah, take some time to go and process it. If there's anything that is not clear, feel free to leave a comment to ask me. You might also want to check out some of my other videos on this subject where I, you know, actually take time to explain everything. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.